Pat Coleman here at the University of St. Thomas with uh, St. Thomas head coach Glenn Caruso as his team defeated Concordia Moorhead 34-20 to, uh, to stay in uh, in the playoff conversation at 7-2, uh, and two, knocks Concordia down to 7-2. and two. And first of all, Coach, you know, you guys go from, uh, you know, playing in the Stag Bowl last year mm -hmm. to now uh, pretty pretty deep on the playoff bubble. What's the difference between, the, you know, 2012 and 2013? Two losses. Right. I mean, well, yeah. and I know what I say, we're pretty deep on the playoff bubble. That might be your opinion. But when I look at it, obviously, I think we have a phenomenal situation that we're in. Um, you know, certainly we weren't as clean this year as we have been last year. Turnovers were a part of that um, earlier in the year. And uh, but at this point, we put ourselves in a great situation at seven and two. We have another conference game next year, next week at, at, uh, at St. Olaf. And, uh, you know, we're in, we're in the best possible spot we can be in in this last month. And if we can finish out, then uh, I think we should all feel pretty good about where we're at. I guess I look at the three two loss teams in the conference. You really need St. John's, who's beaten you head to head. You need them to lose to Bethel next week. But you've beaten Concordia Moorhead. So among the two loss teams in the West region, you might be in the top spot or you might not be. We'll find out on Wednesday. There's still a lot of football to play. So like you said, we all have games next week. And, you know, if you don't win that game, it doesn't matter. But of those others, I mean, you could probably cut it a lot of ways. If there's a three way tie for two lost teams, then I'll have to go to other criteria because we all beat each other. But if one of those teams, including us, ends up having a third loss, uh, then it's pretty easy when it comes to head-to-head -head of the two lost teams. So uh, over the course of the season, you know, obviously you lost starting quarterback Matt O'Connell a few weeks ago in the uh, Gustavus game. Uh, Alex Fenske's looked pretty good as his backup. Yeah. Uh, you've got, you know, the running game has been a bit of a rotation, whereas, you right. know, down the stretch last season, you relied on Brenton Braddock quite a bit. Yeah, and there have been... Um a ton of injuries that we've had and it's almost like a guy will get injured another guy will step up and then sometimes the injured the guy that comes back off the injury replaces the other guys I'm just really happy that we have you know we're down to our fourth quarterback at this point and our fourth quarterbacks playing winning football in this league which I think is pretty good Alex Fenske's done a great job he hasn't been perfect we know that but he made some really tough throws with a tough win to navigate today and at running back I mean you look at Nick Wolvogel started a uh, started number six on the depth chart to begin the season and uh, you know injuries are a part of the game and I think one of the reasons why we did what we did last year and the run that we made was because of our depth and we have that same depth this year. Uh, you guys uh, defensively great game uh, on Saturday. Um, I, I have at least unofficially you held them to 25, 35 yards of total offense in the second half. Yeah, I, the second half defense was I think probably the highlight of the game. Certainly um, don't want it ever have 20 points and a half you know and, and credit Concordia they did a fantastic job I think their balance really helps them out fortunately I think it allowed us to be a little bit more relaxed because we still had a, a one score lead I think it was 27 to 20 at halftime so it kind of reminded us a lot of last year and how we were able to play where regardless of what the score was you had a one score lead we got the ball back we drove downfield we punched it and we had a two score lead and now we control a lot more of the game it felt really good to get back to that style of play uh, back in the first quarter they jump out to a 13 nothing lead and, yeah. and they had uh, some success throwing the ball on you guys uh, I know I think Brandon Zilstra had two catches on those first two drives and then he didn't have one the rest of the game yeah and that I mean they have some really really talented wide receivers and they're tough matchups because they're long they're tall guys uh, and Griffin did a, did a good job putting the ball out for him I mean the touchdown he had down here that ball was out well before he passed the corner and we didn't make a very good play on it but um, they're they're really really talented at the wideout spot so for us to go three quarters without holding them to a catch is something that we got to be able to be pretty happy about Obviously, with all the games going on simultaneously on Saturday, this Saturday, next Saturday, there's not a lot of opportunity to do scoreboard watching in Division Three. But I didn't see any of it. Yeah. So, but I have to think next week your fans, at the very least, are going to be doing a lot of scoreboard watching. Certainly, they're entitled to that. We can't on the sideline because uh, if we don't play well and we don't win the game, then you know. We, there's nothing that's going to happen for us with three losses. If we play well and we can find a way to pull out a win, then we should be in phenomenal shape at 8-2. and two. But, uh, that, you know, scoreboard watching is something that the fans have the luxury of that a coach, in my opinion, doesn't. And uh, that's okay. We'll worry about how well we play next week. Glenn Caruso and the Tommies, they defeated Concordia Moorhead 34-20, hoping for one of those five at-large bids to come their way next week in Selection Sunday.